Hey everyone, it's Sly47 here. Last week, we suggested some fixes to some of the worst tier 10s, and I thought this week, let's do some premiums. So, grab some food, grab a drink, let's talk about some uh, really bad chips that really aren't worth your time or money. Cheers, let's jump into it. So, what chips are we going to be covering today? Well, actually, for anyone who doesn't know, if they didn't see last week's video, I'll put that link down in the description below, but we are taking from the community tier maker, except this one from the premium one. If you haven't seen that and want to see exactly why we put the ships in there, or at least a little bit of not uh, context in that, well, I will make sure that the description also has that video there for you. But for today, I'm actually taking from the playable and the collectors I kind of grab bagged a bunch of ships that I thought, and I looked at them and then kind of shouted out to me that, Hey, those need to be better. So I grabbed those might have to have a part two, part three, part four. I don't know. It depends on whether or not Wargaming wants to keep on giving us just bad premiums and ships that just definitely aren't worth it, but we'll find out. So let's jump into the first ship. First up to bat is a ship that did not translate well at all from PC to Blitz, which is the USS Alaska. This is a support battle cruiser. Unfortunately, it's very inaccurate and exceedingly easy to kill. Now, Saying it's easy to kill isn't saying much since most tier 9 cruisers are pretty easy, but the inaccuracy is what really kills it. Now, after using the CIC's website a bit more in order to kind of investigate exact numbers, which if you haven't, go check them out. But I kind of started running this problem that Alaska all of a sudden became incredibly powerful once you make it accurate. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a little bit more of that support capability putting it up more into that niche area where you're like, hey, I can bring this with another good cruiser or another battleship and be that support battle cruiser that this game really needs to have and really blend well into the meta. So the fix, we need to increase the AA damage. This thing should have incredible AA damage, in my opinion, and just absolutely wallop planes. So you can sit next to a few battleships and know that you're going to give them support, even if your guns aren't really truly giving them that much support. Next up, plus 3% main battery firing chance. This actually has some of the lowest fire chance outside of USSR heavy cruisers for big guns of this size. So actually, yes, please give it more fire chance so that it can actually use its HE a little bit more because right now its HE does jack squat. And then unfortunately, because it's an accuracy, you really can't use its AP all that well at long ranges or at mid range. Actually, its AP is pretty darn good. So don't don't shy away from using that Alaska, and I, I really do wish we're gonna give it that fire chance to so help. And then I also thought it would be nice since it does have that radar, it does have that precise aim, so that you can go hunt DDs. Let's give it a little bit puncher HE as well. Give it another hundred damage on there. That will give it another nine hundred ish to another. You know, depending on how much it pens, a little bit more damage to take on those DDs and be that support battle cruiser that we really need in this game while also maybe taking these up to the Puerto Rico and down to the Congress, which would really help a lot of these ships in order to maybe be a little bit more playable, a little bit, a little bit, especially the Kansas, but the Alaska, these fixes, Puerto Rico would make it even better on top of it. But right here, the Alaska, I think it need, just needs this, and it's definitely good playable ship and maybe even borderline niche, depending on how you exactly work with your team. Next up, we have another battle cruiser, unfortunately, at tier 9 that I know a regular might be kind of bad that I added it in this, but they also will probably be totally up for any additional buffs this ship gets in order to make it even more powerful. But to me, its older brother is just clearly better. But the IJN Azuma, this ship is extremely squishy. It's destroyed quickly because of its long, massive size and very low DPM, but it does have moments where it can definitely work. It's just you have to play to those advantages and specifically try to stay away from people and, and choose your battles wisely, which is why actually for this ship, the fix actually is minus one kilometer on surface detection. Make this a little sneakier and then increase the AA range and damage by 20%. So I say that specifically so basically you're playing the Azuma more as this gun focused sneaky battle cruiser versus the Yoshino. Now you're this sneaky big old battle cruiser, but you have torps, so you play it just slightly different in that where here the Azuma you're going to be more focused on when are my skills up and then I can engage and then also when my skills are down disengage cloak back up and stay hidden until you can strike again. I add the AA damage and range there specifically because this ship gets 
absolutely obliterated by most carriers, especially tier 8 carriers, tier 9 carriers can just bully this thing. Don't mention even tier 10 carriers at that point. But the Azuma definitely needs to be a little bit punchier. So in my opinion, you're trading this more sneaky and AA focused tier 9 versus the more torpedo focused tier 10. I think that would make the Azuma really a good niche ship. But let me know, of course, in the comments down below how you would fix this ship. Now, let's leave tier 9 and let's go to our first Blitz Pass ship. This ship, unfortunately, got a nickname the moment it came out because it was just that bad. But unfortunately, we have the only Spanish Navy ship in the game that carry my ass. I'm sorry, Canarius. So this ship is a secondary cruiser with a lack of range and bad armor. Unfortunately, that lack of range mostly affects its secondary, so it actually can't really use its niche. So it's really just kind of a basic, bland gunboat cruiser. And at tier 6, that really doesn't cut it in this area. So... Let's fix that a little bit. Let's give it a little bit more niche. So to me, the fix is 0.8 to 1.2 kilometer secondary battery range increase. That kind of gets it more closer to the idea of how the German battle cruisers are, where the secondaries kind of overlap that surface detection range. Next up, another thousand-ish health. I think that would give it just enough to stay alive a little bit longer to use its niche, or at least get close enough to use its niche, and then plus two secondary overloads. One basically make it a German battle cruiser, but Spanish and at tier 6, and kind of usable at least. So hopefully they can do this because there's a few Blitz Pass ships on this video, and uh, yeah, a lot of them aren't that really good. So let me know in the comments down below if you'd want this change or what changes you'd want on the Canarius here. Oh, black ships. They at least tend to make a meaningful side grade, right? They tend to. Unfortunately for the Black Charles Martel, yeah, it didn't. It's a non-rapid reloading French ship. And pretty much most French ships need the rapid reload to even be usable. This one gets precise aim and a butt ton of engine accelerators. That's not going to save its life. And this ship is a just a trade I would never make. I'd rather work on a its own commander and rebuy back the Charles Martel than buy the Black Charles Martel. Let no, just no wargaming. But if you really want to keep it the way it is and not bring back rapid reload in some manner in my opinion the fix for me minus 1.5 seconds off its main battery reload time at least make it a reason to pick this up where you're like hey i now just have better overall dpm rather than burst dpm you know make that trade a little bit it would at least make sense because now you actually can kind of use that precise aim a little bit because of course you're not going to have a commander specced into it specifically so it's not going to be any longer than most it's just yeah no let's try to make this ship just a little bit better war gaming just give it better reload and it would at least make sense of a side grade for the charles Martel, which is actually a pretty decent ship hi right, everyone let me see raise your hands or comment down below hit that like button maybe if you bought this ship in the Blitz games only for the steel, because I sure did, HMCS Hiata. This ship, oh boy, everyone learned how bad it was. <laughs> everyone learned how bad this ship is. This ship has horrible fire chance. Very lackluster range, really, for Tier 7. It's it just it doesn't have enough. And then, of course, you have weak torps that are... Kind of fast reloading, but not really with how much damage and flood chance they put out. It's just why? Wargaming, why? Everyone was like, hey, at least this has history and everything like that. And yeah, they want it. And you put it on a Blitz Pass ship and it was downright horrible. Downright horrible. Okay, let's let's fix this. Let's let's just do it, okay? I'm gonna Wargaming, please do this. The hiata needs it. Okay? Put it in a tier six. <laughs> Just seriously move it down a tier. Just do that. Okay? Because, dear lord, this ship needs it. At tier six, I actually think it would be a pretty competitive ship. It would actually be quite fun. It's lack of you know, fire chance. It's okay damage overall. It's pretty good DPM. Actually, it would work at tier six and be pretty dangerous. At tier seven, no. No, it doesn't. So just knock it down a tier. But if you want to keep it tier seven... Let's fix it that way. Minus one second off main battery reload because, of course, it already has a horrible fire chance. It doesn't really need it, so make it fire more often, please. 
and about eight seconds off its torpedo reload. I think that would be perfect. I think they would start getting it into a very good playable state because there were moments that I felt, I was like, hey, maybe I can make this ship work. Maybe it can work. But I felt like I was having to pull hairs, just really had to push myself in order to get a good amount of damage in the ship. Because I'd constantly be like, man, I hit 100 shells, I hit 7, 8 torpedoes, and I still wouldn't have broken 40k. Like, I'm like, why? So, please, one of these. Just make the height at least usable, okay? These will help. Oh, man. And also, let me know, anyone, have you finished the battle honors for this ship, or are you waiting for respawn like I am? On to yet another Blitzpass ship. I know there seems to be an ongoing motif between cruisers and Blitzpass ships. We'll see when we, if we ever break the mold here. But this ship was the introduction to the Italian DD line, the RM Leone. So this was a standard DD in Italian format. It did have lacking torps, but they did reload pretty quick. So they're kind of an interesting style. But the horrible gun reload and the skills, just everyone was like, please don't let the regular tech tree line work this way. Please don't end the clearly don't but when you compare the leone to the regular tier six you all of a sudden realize this ship needs a good bit of fixing so the fix it needs an entire three seconds off its main battery reload time to even be close to the tier six at this moment that's how bad its reload is and then of course give it an additional one percent main battery fire chance make it at least somewhat capable of starting fires leone needs to at least be playable so we can work on our italian dd commanders a little bit but since it's such a different ship in comparison to the tech tree line i'd almost just work on a commander in any other italian premium it just it, this ship just doesn't really work but we're giving can, can we make it work please that way people don't have to play the palo emilio you know come in, maybe <laughs> moving to actually two ships this time because they are pretty darn close to each other, but I feel like they just need a little bit of love, and actually a lot of people might enjoy them further. But we have the USSR Krasny Krem and the USS Marblehead. These, unfortunately, are two cruisers that deal with weak armor, okay damage output, and kind of meh range, pretty lacking overall in my opinion. And that's what really hurts it, because at Tier 5, the DDs are starting to get a little bit longer range torpedoes, and then on top of it, the battleships are more volume of fire ships. They don't really necessarily hit hard, but with the met, like with the weak armor, unfortunately, these ships really do run into the state of where just they get hit enough and they kind of explode. So in my opinion, the fix for both of these ships to make them at least pretty decent and maybe even decent fire breathers, it's actually another kilometer of main gun battery range. This would really give them that niche at tier five over their tech tree brethren, but Overall, I think this would also allow them time to actually dodge shells that are incoming, especially with the volume of fire and horrible accuracy those battleships at Tier 5 tend to have. They kind of place out an area, so if that cruiser cannot be in that area and have longer enough range to react to that, they might actually be pretty fun ships at Tier 5. Because overall, that okay damage output is not really a problem as long as you're able to stay alive long enough to use that damage output to win over your enemies. So... My opinion, I think to fix these two, which are these two are pretty jokes in the community, give them another kilometer of range wargaming, and they'd be pretty good. But of course, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are. Now back to another Blitz Pass ship. Unfortunately, this ship, kind of because of its name, got a bit of a nickname, just about as bad as the Canarius when it came out. But uh, you know, because I also bought it and enjoyed saying it, so I helped propagate this horrible joke but the Mysore or the Mysore asked that I bought this ship this is an AP only cruiser Leander class for remembering right with fuel smoke and rapid reload one now AP only ships can really work in this game if they have smoke in my opinion because you need that smoke to stay alive long enough to make it work where fuel smoke doesn't last as long and is more of not just about staying alive, but more of an offensive defensive situation. And the rapid reload one doesn't help it do enough damage output to utilize that fuel smoke as a offensive or defensive button to do a bunch of damage with. So the fix, in my opinion, change that rapid reload one to rapid reload two. This would make it very much more of a burst play style and much more of, hey, I'm going to pick my target when I need to be in, when I need to be in this area in order to be ready with my skills to just wall up the thing with damage. But outside of it, it's kind of just a mediocre ship overall with AP only and no real way to survive. Make it more of an ambusher per se. Then on top of it, 
minus two seconds off of time to full speed, make it a little bit quicker, get up and go, allow it to ambush a little better, and then 0.8 seconds off turn time, just to kind of make it a little quicker on that nim nimbleness. I think this would really help it survive outside of that fuel smoke, and then also on top of it, utilize its capability of being a burst machine at this tier. So love to know because that way we can also get rid of maybe another joke ship in this game with its name, you know, it'd probably help it. Finally, we have a ship that is yet another Blitz Pass ship. I know, right? And yet another cruiser. Why does Wargaming hate them so? <laughs> but the IJN Yahagi. This is a massive torpedo boat. This is the Tier 6 Shimikaze in cruiser form. It's incredibly deadly, but unfortunately, due to its size and bad armor, this one-trick pony ain't gonna survive past its one trick, and if you miss... Yeah, that's that's it. That's it. There's no going back. There's no get out of jail free cards. There's nothing for this ship to survive. So to me, the fix is going to be a bit of a mix here. So first off, we need to make its main battery worth it. It's got really, really low main battery DPM for this tier. So minus one second off main battery reload time at the very least. That way its guns can be used against DDs because I swear I feel like I've actually been outgunned by DDs in the Yahagi, that's just how rough this ship is and how big it is at times. And then uh, either or here. So increase the mass traverse speed by 1.6 degrees per second. That kind of makes it more in the top area line. This way it can actually turn because it has horrible torpedo launch angles. So it can get into that position and launch those insanely powerful torpedoes, be it that. And then also turn fast enough to maybe dodge getting detected while launching those insane amount of torpedoes, and insane powerful ones or give it more surface detection, 0.9 kilometers. That would really kind of put it, once again, in the upper echelon of cruisers for that tier. Thank you, once again, to CIC website for helping me out find out all this information. But overall, the Yahagi, it is a one-trick pony. Let's at least make it a usable one-trick pony, maybe so they can get it off two sets. <laughs> maybe, because right now, yeah, Yahagi, you're going to get one set off, and if you get spotted, you're just so big, you're just going to get walloped by anything in 5, 6, or 7 from battleships, and some DDs even will outclass you in general just with their guns alone. That's just how bad the Yahagi is, so let's at least make this usable, Wargaming, please. Please. That is it for today's video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my suggestions on there, and maybe, of course, your own suggestions. Love to send this to Wargaming and try to help these ships out. I specifically chose them from this list because these are the ships that people have asked me to talk about, play on stream, or are they going to change in the future type of thing. The rest aren't really much talked about or tiers that people don't play or kind of more meme combos black colorado but i digress <laughs> hope you all enjoyed today's video if you did hit that like button subscribe if you haven't there's a notification bell there if you want to see whenever a new video or stream goes live special shout out to the patreon members and super chatters for all the support if you want to help support or join up more into my community the link tree link is down below in the description to access everywhere especially join up on discord for stream nights fun it's just a blast to get everyone on there and just have a mosh bit of fun with mikasas or even weirder games hopefully you all have a great day peace